All right, we're going to do the video for processors now about Windows 7. This video is going to be about what processor you should have to run Windows 7 comfortably. Uh, I have a video about RAM, how much RAM you should have, or memory, and your hard drives, processors here, and probably a video about your graphics card. So right now there's two popular kinds of processors. There's Intel and there's AMD. Um, there's a lot of videos out there about Intel versus AMD. Um, it, it's hard. It, it's it's really just it's just hard to pick which one. I'm an Intel guy. I think it's a better processor. You get what you pay for. It's more expensive. Um, you get a better cache with it. The processor cache is. I really don't want to explain that to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, but it's what the processor can do before it actually does it. If that makes sense. Everything caches, so if your hard drive has cache, memory has cache, processor has cache, uh, bus has cache. So, Intel, right now they've got a pretty popular processor called the Core 2 Duo. It's an excellent processor. I've got a T6500, 2.1 gigahertz, a dual core. A dual core is two processors on one die. The die in a computer is it really just looks like the piece of gum somebody stuck on top of the processor. So with a Core 2 Duo, you essentially have two processors working for you at whatever speed. There's megahertz and there's gigahertz. Most processors now are, are in gigahertz. A gigahertz refers to a billion events per second. So 1.2 gigahertz dual core is 2.4 billion events per second if they're both running on high speed, 100%. Then you can overclock it. All overclocking involves is putting more power, more voltage, into the processor to get it to go faster. Uh, it's going to get hot, dangerous, it's legal, uh, I'm pretty sure, and one, your processor is going to die out earlier because you're working it harder. The Intel Core 2 Duo is a great processor. Before the Core 2 Duo, they had Centrino Duo, which was also a dual core. It just ran a little hotter, and it didn't have the same architecture or technology in it. It was a good processor, though, like the T2500, T2400, T2300, T2200. They were good processors. I have a 2 gigahertz T2500 in my ThinkPad. Still runs great. Uh, the Intel Core 2 Duo, any dual core is good. You want to run, you want to have a dual core with Windows 7. Windows 7 will run on Pentium M. It'll run on Pentium 4. Um, possibly even Pentium 3. I would not try that. Pentium M runs fine uh, if you just want basic performance. I would suggest the Core 2 Duo or the Centrino Duo. Obviously, anything better than that, the Core i5, the Core i7, those are fantastic processors, any quad core. Uh, that's four cores on one die, which just amazes me. But anyways, a clock speed faster than about 1.6 gigahertz dual core will be fine. Um, and for a solo core, about 1.4 gigahertz can be good as well. Or obviously, the more, the faster it will run. So that's Intel. Uh, Intel caches are usually two megabytes. Some of the newer ones are four, maybe six, even up to eight megabytes. Bigger cache, better performance. AMD, they have Curion and Athlon right now. You can also get Black, probably butchered the spelling of that. But you can get Black Edition and all kinds of big, fancy, expensive server processors and PCs now. That's really unneeded. Dual cores with AMDs are labeled as X2. It makes sense, times two, because there's two processor cores. Um, some of the Turions are labeled TL and then a number. Like the TL56 is 1.9 gigahertz dual core. The TL60 is a two gigahertz dual core. I've had the TL60, and it is an excellent processor. And it has a L2. L is level. Most of them are L2s now. 2 meg cache, or it had a 1 megabyte cache, whereas most Intel's have 2 megabytes. More cache, better performance. Um, AMDs are really just budget processors. They're good processors, processors to get the job done. Um, some people live by them and will die by them. I'm not one of those guys. I've got to have an Intel. Uh, the Centrino platform by Intel covers all Pentiums, Core 2 Duos, Centrino Duos, Pretty much all Intel processors that you see every day are on the Centrino platform. Then there's two kinds of architectures for processors. There's x86, which is 32-bit, 
and there is x64, which is 64-bit. 64 64-bit 64 is becoming the new standard in computing. Really, it's just a different set of instructions that goes to your memory. 64-bit can use up to 128 gig of RAM. 32-bit can use, depends on the computer, somewhere between 3.0 and 3.5 gig of RAM. Some people have reported more, some people have reported less. My experience, I usually get about 2.93, somewhere in there, um, maybe even 3.0. Um, so that's your two processor architectures. 64-bit, it needs 2 gigabytes with Windows 7 as a minimum for that. Let's see, what else do we want to talk about? Processors. The price of the processor is really different. Intel, they can go all the way up to like 700 bucks. And they, you can get one for $50, and it'll be a good processor. Um, I would recommend sticking with Intel. That's just who I am and what I go by and what I'm used to. A, I, I can't get my processor in my Lenovo G550. I cannot get it over 45 degrees Celsius. Right now, we'll see in just one moment. It is at, I'm going to guess, about 38 Core 0 is at 37 degrees Celsius, and Core 1 is at 37 degrees Celsius. Great processor in this thing. Uh, the speed of your processor really affects um, the heat that you're going to get, and how, obviously, you work the processor is going to affect that as well. Most AMD processors um, are always 64-bit. AMD has been good about that. Most AMDs are 64-bit compatible. Not all Intel's all are. I believe all the Core 2 Duos are. I'm not sure. Some of the Core Duos are. I do not believe that any of the Pentium are 64-bit compatible. I could be wrong. There may be some Pentium 4s, Pentium 4Ms, or Pentium Ns that are... By the way, the M stands for mobile. It's just a mobile version of the Pentium 4. A uh, little smaller, a little work down. And then there's, then there's hyper-threading. HT really just tells Windows that there's two physical processors and one logical processor. Um, that's essentially all it does. It doesn't improve performance a little bit. I mean, not not night and day like XP and Windows 7. Um, anyways, processor is a major part of your computer. It uh, processes all data. The faster processor you have, uh, the better it's going to process your data. Obviously, the quicker the press the quicker it will process your data, and the more work you can get done in less time. So I'm not even going to get in, going to get into the Intel versus AMD thing. So there's your processor video of what you should have with Windows 7. Thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe.